to me is everybody. Uh, welcome to another week of fertility focus. My name is Kola Wale Kusin, and I'll be discussing on semen analysis. Okay, so why do we do why is semen analysis important in fertility? That's if if you're looking for a child and you've been unable to conceive, you need to do a semen analysis. And this semen analysis is done prior to the start of any IVF procedure you want to do. So why is this semen analysis important? It is important to know the health and vitality of a man's sperm. As we all know that a woman cannot produce a child on her own. There's a need for the conjunction of the man and the woman to produce a child. So the semen analysis is needed to be able to know the health and the vitality of a man's sperm. Whereby we carry out this procedure so as to know if the man is okay and is not infertile and the sperm is viable enough to produce a child. And when, we're, when we carry out the semen analysis, we look out for so many um, criteria that we're looking out for the morphology, that's how the this shape of the sperm is the head in the is the head okay, is the tail perfect, is everything okay for the injection. To go on, they are looking at the um the count. They are looking at how many sperms there are in this man's, how many sperm there are in the semen sample. We are also looking at the count. That's we call that concentration. That's the count of the sperm. That's how like in the old field in the old ejaculation, how many sperms are there to be able to produce and to be able to carry out the IVF procedure. So. The indications for semen analysis, one, is to check out infertility. That's on the man's part, to check out infertility. And two, people that, that do vasectomy also need a semen analysis. So for people that do vasectomy, is to check out if, they, if actually the procedure carried out was actually done correctly. And for in situations where the person does a vasectomy, what we're checking for is if the the sample is empty. So meaning that if if you do a vasectomy, if your sample is like we can't see any sperm, meaning the, the, the vasectomy procedure carried out was actually done correctly. But in the case of infertility, we're looking out to check if the man actually has sperm and if maybe the cause of infertility is maybe from the woman's side or we're just trying to look out for or what exactly is wrong, why this couple cannot get pregnant. So the first, the, as I said, we had criteria we check out for, for semen analysis. So the first we look out for is the count. So while here we're looking at how many sperms are in the semen sample, how many, yeah, how many sperms are in the semen sample that the count. And according to WHO, there are lower and higher limit that we're checking for. And the lower limit, limit rather, for a semen count is 15 and above. So if it is less than 15, then this person has a low sperm count. If it is more than 15, then this person has a good or normal semen count. Then another thing we look out for is the motility. That's how much, like how many sperms are in that sample. How many sperms are in that semen sample. That's here we're looking at the progression, how they are moving. Whether they are moving fast, whether they are moving slow, or they are just progressing. And we also check out for the number of semen that are not even moving at all. We call those ones immortal sperm. So here, the lower limit is like from 35% upward. So 35% upward, we can say that, okay, that is a normal semen motility upward. And like I said, upward. So here, we, this, 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 um, parameter is very important because we want to know that oh because it's only a moving sperm that can actually um fertilize an egg any motile sperm cannot fertilize an egg only a moving so here we're checking for okay if they are moving how fast are they moving are they moving in a straight line that's in a linear um, movement or they are just moving around a circle like round a few rather so we are looking at the linear progression of the sperm and how fast they move because it is only a motor sperm that can fertilize an egg. Another thing we look out for is the morphology. That's 
the semen, the sperm, the semen rather, the sperm in the semen, does it have a normal form? Does the head like? If you look at the diagram of a sperm, it has the head, it has the middle piece, and it has a tail. The tail, like we, we look at for the whole progression, does the head is is the head big? Is the head small? Is the head normal? Is the tail moving fast? Is does is the tail bent? So those that's what we call morphology. We're trying to look out for the normal forms of the sperm. That's it's it supposed to have a normal form, and the normal form of the sperm is the head is oval shaped. The tail is like so we're looking out for does the head have a, is it big? Is it small? Because if it's not in the normal form, it can affect the child. It can affect the result we get, and it can affect how the um, the sperm how the progression of the egg of the embryo rather how the progression actually goes on so all these things are important and for the morphology we use a Kruger test test and the Kruger test states that the monomer form is supposed to be four percent and above that's like four to eight percent so when we do a semen analysis there there are so many protocols that needs to be carried out before producing First, look at the days of abstinence. The days of abstinence is supposed to be two to, we use two to three days here, but so many other people say it's two to seven days, but it's two to three days abstinence. So before you come into the hospital to produce a semen sample, you are supposed to abstain for two to three days before coming in. That's one. Two, we also look out for your lifestyle factor because your lifestyle factors can actually affect the viability of the sperm. Do you smoke? Do you drink? Do you take so much caffeine? How is your lifestyle? Do you exercise too much? Because too much or too less can affect it. If you exercise too much, are you the type of person that your work it requires you to sit down for a long time? Do you put your laptop on your lap? It also affects the viability of the cement sample. That's, that's the second criteria we look out for. Because if you if your lifestyle if you are, also we look out for drugs are you on drugs any prescription that's the third one are you on drugs any prescription they also affect the they also affect affect the viability of the semen sample so once once you come into the hospital you feel a form and that form tells us oh, what exactly what to look out for so if you have a a semen sample that is um maybe bloody or so we begin we begin to ask all those questions how's your lifestyle do you drink do you smoke do you do any other activity that can affect so another criteria that we look out for is the volume the volume of the semen the um the criteria the parameters for the volume is supposed to be 1.5 mil and above 1.5 mil and above for the semen analysis and also we look out for the appearance the appearance of a semen sample is very important. That's when we know if you are, if you have infection, if your, if the sample is okay to use, because the normal, the normal appearance, are you continuing? Continue. Okay. The normal appearance for a semen sample is supposed to be opaque, like grayish or whitish gray. If it is bloody, then we look out for oh, do you have did was there blood in your sample? Are you do you have infection? Do you do you have any other thing that so those are like question marks whenever we come whenever we come in contact with any semen sample. That I've I've said I've talked about the uh, morphology, the count, the motility. I've also talked about the appearance. So the appearance is supposed to be whitish gray, is not and we also look out for the viscosity. How thick is the semen sample? How watery is the semen sample? So we check for how thick or how watery a cement sample is. The cement, the cement sample is not supposed to be too watery and it's not supposed to be too thick. It's not supposed to be too watery and it's not supposed to be too thick. So we also check out for that because that can also affect the count of the sample. The count of the sample. So in summary, in summary, a normal cement analysis should have one. The count should be 39 million and above. Two, the volume should be 1.5 mil 
1.5 mil and above three the concentration that's the the count per ejaculate per millimeter rather it should be 15 million and above and also the motility should be 32 percent and above and the morphology morphology is the normal form should be four percent that's four to eight percent four to eight percent or four percent and above that's how you describe a normal semen analysis all this is very important in in your process or your journey to conceiving a child it's very important to know the issue or the reason why there is an infertility problem and i would like to encourage all men out there to come and check their to come and do a semen analysis to know the counts to know what exactly is causing the problem of infertility and at clevy hospital and fertility we have good hands to help check these things and to also journey with you in the process of conceiving a child all right once again my name is kola and don't forget to join us next week for another fertility focus thank you